My name is Randy White and I'm going to demonstrate to you oxygen setup. I'm also going to be demonstrating the non-rebreather mask and the nasal cannula too. So in oxygen setup, what we want to remember is that oxygen is not flammable. Oxygen supports combustion, so everything around it will burn hotter, brighter, those types of things. But oxygen itself is not flammable. What is important to remember is that oxygen is under a lot of pressure. It's under 2200 PSI, um, pounds per square inch. And so one of the dangers of this oxygen tank is that it is under so much pressure that we, if the nipple were to come off of this particular tank, be, be knocked off somehow from a fall or whatever, that it would probably go through a couple of block and brick walls. So it's under a lot of pressure. Uh, so we never want to leave an oxygen tank unattended and we never want to leave an oxygen tank just sitting up like this right here. So if we're going to leave, we want to make sure that it is on a stable surface that is being held and that it is down like this so that there's no chance of it falling. Now, when I set up my oxygen in the morning, I want to make sure that I have a full tank so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the oxygen regulator on the tank. The tank is set up at about 2200 PSI. Now if we gave a patient 2200 PSI, that would be a lot of oxygen in a very short time. So what the regulator does is it actually brings it down to a usable PSI that we can actually give our patient. Now the thing to remember is that an oxygen regulator will only fit an oxygen tank. There's a pin system that is used and in particular an oxygen tank has two pins right here and then where the oxygen comes out is here. The next thing to remember is that the O2 regulator have the same two pins and the same place where the oxygen comes out. So I can't put a nitrogen regulator on an oxygen tank or I can't put an oxygen regulator on a nitrogen tank, okay? Because it supports, conduct, uh, supports combustion, it is important for you to know that you don't oil any part of an oxygen regulator because oil does not only support combustion, it is combustionable. Now, what we want to do is when we first get our oxygen tank, a lot of times we'll have little filings, minute micro filings inside, and we want to open the tank up just slightly so that we can blow these filings out and make sure that the tank is complete so we don't uh, ruin our regulator with these, with these oxygen tank filings. So we're going to do what we call crack the tank. And that's all it takes just to get those oxygen filings out of there. Now, the next thing is, is we're going to take the regulator and we're going to place it on the tank and we're going to hand tighten the screw that is in the back to make sure that we have the oxygen regulator on, all right? Now what we're going to do is we're going to open the tank to make sure that there are no leaks and we bring the tank about three quarters of a turn open, should be fine. To make sure there's no leaks around, okay, and we are going to check our gauge to make sure that it reads full. Now, Anywhere from 500 to a, about 2200 PSI is acceptable. Anything below 500 uh, PSI, we don't use. We normally try to change our tanks out below 500 PSI. Now, the other thing that we want to do is we want to make sure that we're getting flows of oxygen. This is the regulator, and this will actually give us flows of oxygen right here. As I open my airway, you can hear the oxygen escape. So 
So I want to make sure that all of those particular stops on this particular tank um, are, are working correctly. So now I have my oxygen tank set up, it's there. Now how do I get oxygen from the oxygen tank or in the oxygen regulator to my patient? The first device I'm going to talk to you about is the nasal cannula. The nasal cannula gives somewhere around, uh, when we're at six liters, gives somewhere around 44% or so, okay? And so we are going to just attach the nasal cannula. We're going to make sure that our oxygen is on, and I'm going to set it to three liters. Nasal cannula is used when you want low flows of oxygen, like with a COPD patient, or um, maybe a, a cardiac patient that has been long-term and he's on oxygen and you use the nasal cannula for low percentages. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to, now that the, that the oxygen is on, we're going to place the nasal cannula in the nose, around the ears, and then tighten up on the neck strap. So the nasal cannula is how we deliver low concentrations of oxygen. Now, higher concentrations of oxygen, as in trauma patients and as in patients who are having a myocardial infarction or uh, whatever the case may be where you want high concentrations, hypoxic patients, where you want high concentrations of oxygen, we use a non-rebreather mask. A non-rebreather mask has a one-way valve here, and it also has a one-way valve inside of the mask. So oxygen can only go from here. Now, the key is, is to fill this reservoir up with oxygen so that when the patient breathes in, the oxygen actually comes from the reservoir bag into the patient's mask. Now, in this particular mask, we get near 100%, because we have a one-way valve here, but this is open. It's never 100%, okay? So now what we're going to do is we're going to hook the mask up. Again, before we ever go to the, to the patient with it, we're going to hook the mask up, and now we're going to open our oxygen tank, and when we do, I wanna make sure that I have my oxygen reservoir closed off with my fingers, and then, I am going to make sure that the mask, that the reservoir stays full. Now as long as the reservoir is full, then you're okay. I'm going to demonstrate breathing through this so that you can see that the, that the reservoir will stay full and this is at about 15 liters a minute. So you can see the reservoir will stay full. Now, after you get the reservoir full, then you can put it on your patient, again BSI, on your patient, and put the strap around the neck, around the head, and have the patient breathe.